All right, hi everybody. Uh, now, uh, in the last video, I showed you how to enter a function into a TI-84 calculator. Now we're going to solve a one-sided limit, or two of them, really, uh, one-sided limits using a graphing calculator and uh, the graphing and trace, uh, the graphing screen and the trace button. So if we want to find the limit of this uh, function right here as x approaches 4 from the left side, well, what's on the left side of 4? On the left side of 4 is 3.9 and 3.99 and 3.999. So we're getting progressively closer to 4, but, um, uh, and, but we're on the left side of 4. Okay, so we're using, uh, so we're going to key those numbers 3.9 and 3.99 and 3.999 into the calculator with this in as a graph. So the first thing we're going to do is turn on the graphing calculator. We're going to go to y equals, and we want to enter this function in, this x squared minus 16 over x minus 4. We're going to hit the alpha button and the y equals button, that'll, and choose option 1, which will give us the fraction uh, appearance. And now we're going to type in x squared, so I'll hit x and then a squared button here, minus... 16. I'm going to arrow down and then type in x minus 4, x minus 4. And so now I have my function in and I'm going to hit the graph button. And so now this is the graph of x squared minus 16 over x minus 4. And we want to know what the limit of this function is as x is approaching 4 from the left side. So that's wherever, uh, like we said before, x is 3.9, then 3.99, then 3.999. Okay, and so what we're going to do is we're going to use this trace button right here. So if I hit trace, and now I can type in uh, values, I can enter values, and the calculator will give me the output values of the function. So if I type in 3.9, see that for x, 3.9, and then press enter, it tells me that when x is 3.9, y is 7.9, okay? So my first output is 7.9. Now I'm going to type in 3.99, enter, and my next output is 7.99. And now I'm going to type in 3.999, enter, and my output is 7.99. And so my outputs are 7. Point, let's see, 9, 7. Point, Nine, nine, and then seven point nine nine nine. And so what is our output getting closer to here? Uh, it's getting closer to eight. That therefore the answer to this limit, this one-sided limit, must be eight. Okay? Alright, let's try another one now. Let's go over to uh, back to y equals. We'll clear this, and now we're going to try this one right here, this limit as x approaches 7 from the right, from the positive side of 7. And so we're going to be looking at uh, numbers larger than 7, uh, but very close to 7 and moving backwards, getting closer to 7. So we're going to key in 7.1, then 7.01, then 7.001. All right, so let's key this function into y1. So I'll hit alpha and then y equals, and I'll choose option 1. That'll give me the fraction appearance. Now I got x squared, so I'll hit x and then the squared. Minus 2x, so then minus 2x, and then minus 35, so then minus 35. Then I'm going to arrow down, and I'm going to go to the denominator, and I'm going to key in x squared, so x squared, then a minus 12x minus 12 x and then plus 35 so plus 35 and now I can graph it so I'm gonna hit the graph button right here and then this is what that function looks like alrighty and so let's see here it looks like where I'm looking I might be dealing with a with an asymptote we'll see um, or maybe not we'll see um, the only way to know is to, well, one of the ways to know is to trace the values 7.1, 7.01, and 7.001. So I'm going to hit trace, and I'm going to key in 7.1. 
and press enter. And my output is 5.7619. Okay. All right. Well, that's, uh, that's, doesn't look like what I've seen before, but hey, let's find out. So let's say 5.76. All right. Now let's key in 7.1 or 7.01. So 7.01. Enter. And I get 5.97. Okay. Maybe I have seen something like this before. So I went from 5.76. Now to 5.97, and now I'm going to key in 7.001, and let's see what I get. I get 5.99. Okay, all right, so here, let's go ahead and write these down. As I keyed in, uh, 7.1 gave me 5.76. When I keyed in 7.01, it gave me 5.97, and when I keyed in 7.001, I got 5.99. And so what does it look like here is happening? What, is it, what does it look like our output values are approaching? 5.76, 5.97, 5.99, what comes next? You guessed it. 6. And so the limit here, based on the calculator, is the limit of this function, uh, the right side of 7, is going to be 6. Okay, So that is uh, one way that you can use a graphing calculator to solve limits. Um, now I do want to do one more because we mentioned it in class, and I'll show you how this may work. Um, it looks to me here like we're going to use the same function uh, only, let's see if I can change this up. I'm going to change this to a five, okay? And then we're going to um, we're going to go back here. All right, so let's say now we're, we change up the limit. Now we're looking for the limit of the same function, but it's as x approaches five, okay? All right, so I'm going to go to trace, and I'm going to trace. Let's see, it's from the right side, so I'm going to be keying in five point one, five point zero one, and then five point zero zero. One. We're going to have those numbers getting closer and closer to 5. So we're going to key in 5.1, and we get 101. Now 5.01, and we get 1,001, and now we'll key in 5.001, and we get 10,001. Okay? Watch what happens if I key in 5.0001. Okay, we get like 100,001. So what's happening to these values is they're getting larger and larger. So as we get closer to 5, we get 101, we get 1,001, we get, oops, excuse me, then we get 10,001, and then we get 100,001. And these numbers are not getting close to anything, okay? And so, because they're not getting closer, because they're not getting, they're, they're actually, they're going toward unlimited values, not limited values. And so we would either say no limit, that's one thing you could write, no limit, or some people say does not exist, or D, N, E. Either way is fine. Uh, the AP Calc exam usually uses the phrase non-existent, and uh, any of those would be fine. Now, some teachers, some professors, if it's an infinite value, they prefer for you to either answer infinity or negative infinity, and that's fine. There's a big argument among people in the math world about whether the limit's infinity or does not exist, but infinite literally means not finite, which means there's no limit to the value. Okay. All right. So there you go. That's how you can use the calculator to identify the limits of functions.